Wait, great. This is the handshake where Ryan cracks my bones and we sync the sound, to the, 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 the audio to the video, to the sound of my hand crushing into small bits. Well, I have been working out. Anyway, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And yeah. today, unsurprisingly, thanks to Ryan's segue, we're talking about exercise and life. Yeah. If you remember uh, back a couple episodes ago, we mentioned heading into unemployment uh, that it's important to take care of yourself. And one of the things that we were aiming to do is to start working out. And since then, I have um, started, I signed up to go to the gym and I've been going and exercising at the, at the gym. So... Uh, I've taken it beyond walking, and also because I've now found employment, I'm not walking the dog nearly as much as I want to, uh, so instead not I Not nearly am, as much as the dog wants you to. Probably. He still gets two walks a day, but um, it's not necessarily me walking him. Sorry, Sarah. Uh, so uh, so I, I, was th- I was just thinking about exercise, and I was thinking about body image and whatnot, and it seemed like a good good thing to talk about today as a podcast site. So. Yeah, I've been working a bunch since I since I was at Liberty, and now that I'm not at Liberty, I continue to work out um, because I have a peculiar relationship with exercise and myself. But none of those things are our icebreaker. Our icebreaker is what is your best sports experience, Ryan? So I'd say my best was uh, 2000, 2005 or two thousand six. I was out at the Rocky Mountain National Army Cadet Summer Training Center, which is a mouthful. It's really difficult yeah, to. Yeah. You have to on pra- just... on the parade square. You have to say all of that before you start issuing orders. Really? Wow. Yeah, because that's that's the name of the. It's essentially like the battalion or the camp name. So it'd have to be Rocky Mountain National Army Cadet Summer Training Center. Attention. Instead, uh, so you in order to address us, you have to say that as a. Uh, uh, prefatory command so but anyway so that summer um as with most cadet camps you have a sports day where instead of doing any kind of training you just ro- the death yeah ro- rotate through a series of, of sporting activities and one of them was shot putting and normally i am not nearly uh as athletic as most of the cadets most of the cadets who go to camp um, are quite a bit uh, more active than i am a lot of runners a lot of like People can do chin ups. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. People who actually can do chin ups, I cannot do chin ups. And if you're while listening to the audio um, portion of this podcast uh, instead of the video, A, you can watch the video on YouTube mm-hmm. and where you can see us and we're smiling and we're laughing and we have things on a shelf behind us like a Cthulhu and an Elliot and a beholder that Gina made. But also, um, we're fat. Yeah. We exert. A larger than normal gravitational pull on everything around us. We have more mass than you, probably. Probably. So, anyway, so needless to say, I am not exactly the most active person. And one of the things that we did that summer was a shot put activity. And I remember looking at the mark that the person who had gone the furthest, and then I went and whatever the proper term is for launching the ball in shot putting isn't it just throwing it could be throw i don't know but it's not a throw Shotting? like it's not a throw right no, like it's, it's like a it's, spin and a no it's it's a you launch it like there's there's no throwing motion it is from here and you just launch it out and the the force of you launching your arm forward i believe is what counts like you're not allowed to throw it at all oh, okay it's not like the softball throw in public school right where it's just whoever could throw the softball the farthest and this softball one softball throw in public school no yeah. Okay. Well, it was it was a thing. I was always second place. There's one guy, Colin Brabender. He always was able to outthrow me in public school. Curse you, Colin Brabender. Oh, curse you. And so the joke all through high school was second place. N- not in a mean way, but I would say, hey, Colin. And he'd say, yeah, second place. Because I, you know, I, I, I never felt like he was making fun of me for that. It was always it was always <laughs> a, a good humor. Anyway, shot put. Anyway, shot put. So I looked at the furthest mark on the ground, and then I launched the ball. And I probably cleared it by like five to ten meters. Like, it was insane how much further I... I had thrown it, and nobody else out through that the entire day. There's six platoons of kids, and I was the only one who, to shot. I'm like, I'm just like, wow. Man. I feel like you were the tallest one. I was the, uh, I was if if not the tallest, then uh, one of the top like two or three kids. Uh, there wouldn't have been much taller than uh, than I, but yeah, it was just insane. I just I felt like king of the world, man. And, like I should have won a gold medal for it, but um, yeah, no. So that was that's probably my best sports experience. Huh. 
How about you, Jim? I don't have anything that tops that. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't play real sports. Um, well, competitive gaming is a real sport. I don't game competitively. I but, know, but you still play a sport. Uh, Skyrim's not a sport, turns out. But uh, no, in in the the sport that I'm thinking of um, is dodgeball, or King's Court, as it is sometimes called in Canada. Yeah, but those are two different rules. Yes, they are. King's Court is a is a more fun rule set, I believe, because mm-hmm. it doesn't involve standing in a circle, letting people throw things at you. <laughs> um, King's Court lets you run around and stand on the other side of a of a field from people and let them throw things at you. But I mean, the point is, you get to run around, mm-hmm. and I have the virtue. I know many people who describe themselves as clumsy, mm-hmm. um, and it is interesting that being large, mm. I have never been clumsy. I mean, it is one thing to be big and clumsy, but it is a, a far weirder thing, it seems, to be large and graceful. But mm-hmm. I do a lot of stuff that involves precision movement and body awareness, like mm-hmm. juggling and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So I spend a lot of time knowing where my arms and legs are. And in dodgeball, it's really good to know all where your, all your arms and legs are. And so every time we would have to play dodgeball in gym class, um, which was whenever the gym teacher didn't feel like doing anything that day, and he was just like, hey, go play dodgeball. I'm going to go do whatever it is the gym teachers do. Mm-hmm. I don't know, wash shorts or something. Count pennies. Sure. Yeah organize the 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 activity room mm-hmm. i don't know i don't know what gym teachers do if you're a gym teacher and you don't do any of those things which you probably don't just just leave a comment and let me know that way i when the next time i tell the story it'll be better <laughs> at least less less insulting <laughs> i know but uh no and it would always it would always work out that i was the last guy on my side couldn't throw a ball for shit couldn't can't hit another human being with a ball. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they've got like 10 people left, but it's just me, and we just sort of do that for 20 minutes until everybody else quits. So you basically had the um, reaction of Spider-Man. You are able to dodge, like, insanely well. Well, yeah, except Spider-Man doesn't have to see it. I can, like, see all the people who would be throwing things at me. (laughs) And, I mean... Usually, like I, you know, I wind up out, but it was usually from from bad luck or or a terrible choice. Mm-hmm. But I mean, most of the time, yeah, it was just people throw balls at me for fifteen minutes, and then we all just call it and go home. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'm definitely large and slow moving, so um, I would get the occasional excellent dodge, but otherwise, I was a very easy target to hit for dodgeball so i did not experience anything <laughs> like what you're describing oh it's super fun i mean yeah. it's it's one of those things where um as 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 a as a big dude i struggled as, and, and not just as a big dude but as a big dude who didn't like sports mm-hmm. um and who read books mm-hmm. and who didn't engage in sports in off time activity mm-hmm. i uh, i struggled a lot in gym class and it was one it was it was one of those moments where you feel really powerful even when you're not. Mm-hmm. And those are important moments to have. And I think that as a, if, if you were a gym teacher, those are important moments to give to kids because yeah. um, high school is rough enough as it is. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on then. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about with this is body image because, mm-hmm. I mean... I try to exercise to to be healthy, but there's always that element in the back of my mind that if I work out, I'll look better. Mm. Um, I'll have a I'll yeah, I get that. I'll have a more pleasing, aesthetically pleasing body, right? And and then I got thinking. Normally, when you talk about body issues, uh, it, it, to me, my experiences coming uh, talking about it come in two flavors. Um, that it's way worse for women. And when guys talk about it, it's usually like men's rights activists saying, yeah, but men have body image problems in the media too. We're not going to do either of those things. We're not we gonna acknowledge that it is way worse for women. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a woman, so therefore I'm not going to talk about body image issues for women. But I can certainly speak about my history with it um, because it's 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 kind of different. It's So I've, I, I've never felt the need to, to conform to a particular image except from my grandfather but he's when whenever he criticizes my body image it's only because he wants me to be healthy 
Uh, I mean, I am a large individual. I'm over 300 pounds, right? That's not that's not healthy. I can't sustain that, or I can't expect to live a long, long life um, if I'm constantly putting stress on my body, or I'm constantly having poor nutritional intake. So I, I generally generally feel that when he criticizes my body, it is coming from a concern that he comes from old school European, where if the, he did he wrestled. He was in the military for a short time, so um, being physically fit and strong was was. You gotta get your grandpa on the, on the cast. It'll oh. be it'll be it'll be called Ryan's grandpa kicks our asses. Probably, um, th- that would be an interesting podcast. But uh, but he also we won't tell him he's on. <laughs> but but he also um, just the day to day life. Uh, granted, he was born in. 37 I think it was so I mean the day to day life for him was had a lot more physical activity in general um, so and for example the last time I went to visit him he gave me a picture of when he was in his 40s it was he was, he was in a swimsuit with my youngest uncle uh, who would have probably been under 10 at the time and they were at a pool and he gave me this picture and I have it hung up on my wall uh, where he said like you don't have to be physically fit but here aim for something like this and he's not super muscular but he's like solid he's solid he worked in a factory um he was active with his strong core he'll whoop your ass yeah i mean he just and he's european right so just like trying to currently like showing his yeah so his he's core so he's tree trunk all the way down and he's got some muscle definition in his arms and his legs like he's just a, a healthy strong looking man not like a strong man um but he's a strong looking man so um so yeah my the pressures I do get for conforming to a certain body um, type only comes from that point of it's healthier if I were to lose some body fat and maybe have a bit more muscle mass. Well, on that end, that is a kind of, pr- of pressure. Like, mm-hmm. I, 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 I mean, gi- giving taking taking time to speak briefly about women and, and, and body image. I mean, you can tell from pressure in the media that the body that pressure in body image is way stronger. And it's different for guys. It's be fit, and that is and that is what. But, but whereas for women, it's often be thin, mm-hmm. um, or or and it links it more strongly with their identity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they like such and such real women. Yeah, and those are campaigns that exist for guys. Yeah, um, I, I mean, like with guys, I, I mentioned this in the production uh, pre production stuff. It is socially acceptable to be a fat white CEO. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, it is it is unacceptable. Most Dick Cheney's not losing any sleep. Yeah. So, and and for women, it's often completely unacceptable to have anything that deviates from what is expected of the norm. Yeah. But it's perfectly permissible to be the fat white cat, the fat rich cat. You know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, fat cat well, from Rescue well, Rangers. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, remo- nothing removes pounds um, from a dude like wealth. Yeah. Um, I find that nothing. Makes people less likely to judge him for his fatness than him having a giant pile of money. No. Uh, I don't know actually anything about that in experience, but no, I, I experience the same kinds of things though. I mean, I mean, exercise and fitness are definitely things that are linked to my body image, and I take great pains to disconnect them. Mm-hmm. So, for example, when I work out, I I deliberately never weigh myself. Mm-hmm. The only times I've weighed myself in the last, like, two years, three years, are when I'm having a physical mm-hmm. and for, you know, insurance-related purposes, which are basically physicals. Yeah. But other than that, I don't I don't set weight goals, and I don't, because because I find that, that, that idea very uncomfortable. I find that notion that, that, that sets the, 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 the groundwork for that, the very premise of... of Setting a weight goal is, I am unhappy with my current weight, Mm -hmm. I must reach a new one. And Mm -hmm. what I'm actually unhappy with, or what I like to think that I am unhappy with, is not my weight, but my my level of activity. I wish to be more active, Mm -hmm. and I understand that being more active is a good thing to do, Mm -hmm. and thus, I am out at 6.30 in the morning with a different Ryan, three days a week, just running my ass off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it also has to do with with exercise often involves showing weakness. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not a person who, who sleekly and artfully runs two miles mm-hmm. or ten miles or any miles. I am a person who chokes and gasps and drags myself through a mile and a half mm-hmm. and then comes out for more punishment. And that is, it is, it is a different thing. But the thing is, is I also know that 
the harder I work to divorce those those goals from mm-hmm. from body image, mm-hmm. the more closely tied to body image they are. Yeah. Because because I wouldn't work so hard if if it didn't have such an effect on body image. Mm-hmm. And that notion of, of, of being the, the fit guy or being the handsome guy or stuff like that. I'm not the handsome guy. I'm the funny guy. Yeah. It's way, and honestly, it is way better to be the funny guy. Yeah. But. Yeah. So, it, it, yeah, body image tends to come up in slightly different ways. I mean, there's less media pressure, but there is a lot of internal pressure or paranoia of what other people think about us. Because mm. I, I, when I used to run an undergrad, I would run at 11 o'clock at night because I knew most people were gone from campus at that point. So, and I would, I would run on ring road uh, as a nice convenient, um, consistent distance. Um, and so I would start my run at 11 o'clock knowing that most students had left. And the, the, and the hilarious, I, I think you're right about the paranoia and the hilarious thing about the paranoia is it is completely groundless because mm-hmm. if you are on a run mm-hmm. and you are, you know, even if you are sweating and dying, and you run into a person that you know, unless that person is a dick, mm-hmm. odds are good they're going to be like, hey, man, you're out for a run. Right on. Yeah. Like, they're, they, any judgment they have of you will not be expressed in that moment or, yeah. or anywhere. They're just going to be like, oh, huh, they're out running. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there, there is, there isn't any, I mean, I mean, you know, except for really hardcore runners who are also dicks, that Venn diagram probably exists. In which case, they're going to be like, wow, I could totally run that in half the time you did. Yeah. Well, yeah. But try running it in a fat suit, fucker. Yeah. No, there's there's definitely going to be the trolls, but most people are just going to ignore you altogether. No. Or they might acknowledge that you, you are an individual moving through space, but that's about it. Well, I, I, so I run mostly on a high school track. Mm. Uh, there's a high school right by my house, and it's, you know, I get up at 6.30, and usually, usually we're still out there running by about 7.27, 7, you know, o'clock, and we get people... Like there are students who are starting to show up and and to to early morning practices and things like that, and there are a couple of other people who run there and and the interesting thing is that in years of running on this track, I have never been heckled. Mm-hmm. And these are these are teenagers. Like yeah. these are high school students. These are literally the second most like like like. Second only to drunk college students, these are the the most likely demographic to heckle me and give me shit, mm-hmm. um, and they never have. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I guess is it is a credit to the students who go to the school near my house, mm-hmm. but also it, I mean it, it is it is also probably more the fact that my fears of them doing that are unfounded. Mm-hmm. That most most people are, you know, barring the exceptionally cruel, are not going to give you shit mm-hmm. while you are running. Because you are essentially, I mean, this is the thing, running from, you don't, like, you don't run. You, we're going to talk about our workout plans in a bit. But you don't really run. You do, like, you know, bike stuff and cardio and, and I, like, running for me is self-abuse. Mm-hmm. I don't really enjoy it. I just really want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I force myself to do it until I can't anymore. And then I continue to force myself to do it in the hope that I will get better. Um, and I, I, I don't know. At that point, I feel like anybody who sees me on the track is just like, why would I kick this guy when he's already down? Like, there's nothing worse I can do to him right now. No. Well, to be fair, you are a large guy, so they maybe don't want to pick on you for fear of... No, no. You, honestly, no. If they've seen me out there running, they know that I'm not going to catch them. <laughs> They're going to run away. They're going to be like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'll kill you <laughs> right after my drinking out of me. There was, there was always a joke. Of, Let me get my uh, buffer. There's, a, there's always a joke that uh, usually the other person can run faster in fear than I can in anger. So <laughs> I'll never catch them. Uh, you know, usually true. the other person can run faster in fear than I can in anything. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's much more to comment on body issue because I feel the same fears. When I first started going to the gym back at the beginning of September, um, I had some of those fears of people judging me because historically I've always worked out with a partner. So now I worked out solo, um, and now I don't feel, I don't feel that at Do all. Do you worry about your partner judging you? Hmm? Do you worry about your partner judging you? No. Uh, oh. When I used to work out with uh, my buddy Carson, he never judged me. Um, he, he could often lift more weights than I could, but I never felt like he judged me, and he was always looking out for me. And 
I, he, we, we keep each other company, but now I'm working out by myself. Uh, I go and do my own thing. There might be people staring at me, but again, like most people tend to be, if they're not focused on talking to each other, then they're focused on doing what they're doing at the moment. There's very few people watching, or at least at my gym, I find that there's not a lot of people stand, like just sitting there staring around at other people. Um, there might be, but you, I don't notice it. Um, Except if maybe if you're on the bikes. <laughs> Why do you come to this gym? Oh, I bought a membership, but I realized that ex- exercise is more of a spectator sport for me. No, oh, true. I, uh, true. Uh, I really just like to watch people exercise and work out, and, uh, you know, I don't feel a lot of pressure to use the machines. No, no. I mean, uh, here, a plausible reason why some would be people watching is uh, what I do notice is there's a lot of inefficient people working out. That's true. I, I No, I do that too when I'm, when I'm at gyms and, and stuff like that is I... I find the people who are like super sports mm-hmm. and I watch what they're doing mm-hmm. because often they are doing it in a way that is better than me mm-hmm. and they're doing it and, and better in the sense not that isn't just like lifting more stuff, but mm-hmm. like technique with, with weights and with, with no. on machines and whatnot, and like running is really important because you can mess yourself up pretty badly. Yeah. So watching them and watching their technique can often teach me stuff. And I've also found that, that as long as I'm not approaching them while they're in mid-squat, they're usually perfectly happy yeah. to answer questions, much in the same way that vegans are perfectly happy to talk about veganism. Yeah. Um, when you don't have a steak in your At any time of the day, yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's like, oh, because I mean, it won, and it's, I don't know, they seem to enjoy it, because no. cause they're, you know, I'm like, you're doing something that, that looks right. And I want to do it that way. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think to recap this section, it's, su- it's sufficient to say that even though we experience body self-conscious body issues, um, largely you and I are approaching exercising from seemingly virtuous or correct positions that we genuinely want to be healthier. We want to push ourselves to be healthier. And it's less to do with looking better or anything like that. And not to say that if there's anything wrong with looking better, but we're doing it because we want to be healthier at least i okay so maybe i shouldn't shouldn't my doctor did tell me that and 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 to be fair he was right but no my 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 thing was um i mean the 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 message for a lot of media is sort of be fit or be thin but for me it's be strong Mm. like i i one of the things i really enjoy doing i we we did a video about i did a video about like a year ago a year and a half ago was helping people move Mm. and I mean, the easier I can make that experience on myself, mm-hmm. the better I am. The more, like, I do occasionally enjoy sports and activity. And mm-hmm. I feel like these are things that I should enjoy because I spend a lot of time sitting down in front of a computer editing videos and editing podcasts. No, yep. And so it's good to get outside and have reasons to leave my house and see people and, general, and, and generally be a full person because yep. activity is part of that. Yeah. No. I'm I'm the same way. I sit at my desk at work. I sit when I commute. I sit at home when I'm relaxing, and then I stand at the bar. So really, like I want to work out to be healthier, but I also wanted to start working out to be stronger at the bar. Um, that way, you don't have to fight. You can just hold. Hold. Did you something. find me imposing? I was going for imposing. <laughs> yeah. So. So what's your workout plan then? What uh, is your? Uh, so this time around, um, I I. I went to the gym and I got a free consultation with a trainer and because I had not stepped a foot in the gym since 2008 um, I asked her for a general total body exercise uh, plan so she gave me uh, a couple exercises and now I've settled on eight main exercises Mm -hmm. um, that work the push pull on the total body not not all at once but every major part <laughs> you of sort of crunch body. yourself up in a ball and then stretch everything out yeah. to its limit yeah the, the one one total body the all in one pressure chamber workout yeah so uh no so what i do is um lateral pull downs shoulder press chest press bicep curls uh seated dips uh, leg curls, leg extensions, and leg presses. And then now I've started to add the cardio component. So I've really prided myself in being able to get through all eight exercises. And I do 12 sets of, sorry, three sets of 12 reps um, with very little rest in between. Mm-hmm. Uh, generally, I just, I'm, I'm listening to music and it's kind of, okay, I feel ready for the next set. And it feels longer, but I imagine it's closer to 15 seconds probably is of just me sitting there. Mm-hmm. Um so I, I can do that in about 30 minutes. So since I've 
gotten that down and I find that I'm not incredibly sore um, the next day, I've added in um, cycling, recumbent, the recumbent bike, uh, just doing a 30 minute um, pre-setting for the weight loss. Uh, so it gives me stretched out interval training of um, uh, really difficult periods and then rest periods. Uh, so that's, that's generally what I'm doing now. Um, it's not what I used to do, but it's getting me back and tr- I'm trying to, I'm trying to be conscious of instilling the habit. Um, cause it takes, what do they say? Like three weeks to a month total, like three to four weeks in order to develop a habit. Yeah. And if I'm only going three days a week, there's the opportunity to fall apart or to fall off the, the wagon. So, um, I've gone pretty reliably since the start of the month when I started working out uh, and, and it's averaged out to about every other day that I'm going to the gym um, well, with weekends maybe two days and then back in the gym so I'm doing fairly well uh, consistent but the most important thing I'm finding that I don't remember doing before is I look forward to exercising I, I actually like even if I'm tired I look forward to going to the gym I find it somewhat relaxing in a you know kind of paradoxical way that i'm there brutally lifting weights sometimes it feels like uh but i find it oddly relaxing um sort of like a meditation again i'm in my own world because i just i I clip on my my music my mp3 player and i just start listening and i just go through my exercises and the music is there to to distract me and i find that uh, i walk out feeling good i feel like i accomplished something even if i've only been there for 40 minutes i'm the same way like uh, so i i run in the morning i use the couch to 5k program which mm-hmm. i highly recommend it's supposed to work in nine weeks for me it's going to take like 15 mm-hmm. because i keep plateauing and it's getting colder and cold air it's a pain to breathe mm-hmm. uh, not as bad as smog but pretty bad yeah um but yeah i'm out and i'm out in the morning and it's it's one of those things i really like a morning run because that is the hardest part of my day mm-hmm. i just get it out of the way and everything else, I'm awake, and everything else feels it feels a bit easier. Uh, the hardest part of that is actually dragging myself out of bed at 6 a.m., yeah. um, which is only usually hard because I've been up until two doing stuff. But playing competitive sports, Skyrim is not a competitive sport. <laughs> but if it was, I would be pretty good at it. No, um, but on top of that, I I, I try and. I don't technically count walking as exercise because I am a pedestrian and I can walk sort of indefinitely, mm-hmm. but I often count it sort of time-wise toward that because, mm-hmm. you know, for example, tonight, after we finish recording, I have to walk down to the lab, unless I drive with Ryan, and stain some tables. Mm-hmm. And uh, that will count, that will count because I will not have time to then also go to the gym tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have a workout room in my, in my prime building, and so I go down there and use our and use our universal weight machine, and I do um, shoulder presses and row and, and machine rows, and you know lap or tricep pull downs and lap pull downs, and um, I do curls on dumbbells mm-hmm. rather than uh, I've been thinking about. I've been looking at our curl bar suspiciously. The interesting thing about living in our in our apartment building that is mostly full of seniors is. I think it's only me and one other person who used the weight machine or the weights at all, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice because it means it stays on my settings most of the time. I don't know who the other person is. I've never seen them. I just know that sometimes I come down and it's set to a different weight. <laughs> um, and I usually do um, two sets of 10 twice a day. And I sort of, my, my thing, I don't listen to music. I probably should. I sort of, I mean, I talk to myself because I talk all the time. Mm-hmm. But I try and focus on, you know, what I'm going to do when I get back upstairs. Hmm. And uh, in between sets, I will go and hang out in my sauna. And I'm trying to, get to to remember to go swimming, but going swimming on my off days is harder to remember on account of it. it, it I like sleeping in on those days, and I don't often get to. But yeah, like it's it's sort of, I really like the Couch to 5K. Uh, I'm really concerned about winter mm. because, I mean, I don't really, I don't like the cold. In fact, I, I hate the cold, but running in the cold is not a thing that bugs me, but running on ice is a thing that bugs me because mm. I will, you know, I don't, the last thing I want is, is to mess up my knee. That, I guess, is the difference between exercise and sports. I mean, really, in sports, if you push yourself to your limit or beyond your limit to the point where you get hurt, you're often admired. If you took a risk for the team, like you see those players who take slap shots to the face, mm-hmm. specifically hockey players who take slap shots because you don't see a lot of 
badminton players taking slap shots to the face. Um, badminton, though, also a high energy and highly competitive sport. Yeah. But uh, whereas an exercise, like if you push yourself beyond that limit, you have done something wrong. Mm-hmm. Like you, you're, the, you're the correct response to that level of strain is walk away and cool down, mm-hmm. not push harder. Mm-hmm. Walk it off. Well, well, or, or just or, or or stop what you're doing and recover. I mean, exercise is about personal care, mm-hmm. not about taking risks. Mm-hmm. You know, your your bungee jumping is not exercise. Yeah. Because the the point is that you are going to come back to that exercise tomorrow, and you can always come back to it tomorrow, and tomorrow you will maybe be a little more ready, and you will be able to move through it. It's a slower process. Yeah. But it's like, uh, well, I mean, it's like gardening in the same way that pretty much everything is like gardening. You just sort of, you start by planting seeds and you sort of water them and you water them every day and eventually they grow. But mm. for a while they don't. And you're just sort of watering the ground and hoping. Mm. <laughs> that is the best description of my runs ever. What are you doing? I'm just sort of watering the ground and hoping. <laughs> you hoping you get faster? Nope. Just hoping it'll get easier. Of course, when it gets easier, that's when you make it harder. And so, what's your what is your like your official sort of workout goal? Um, so when I met with my trainer, um, so we did an initial consultation, and then I'm meeting with her at the end of the month, the last Monday of the month, and we're going to do a check in where she'll weigh me, yeah. she'll take all of my measurements again, and I'll probably have to do like a push up test and a wall sit test. But I, I think I pretty much only told her two goals: like a wall sit, like Spider Man. Uh, I I would appreciate that, but no, the <clears throat> one where you pretend you're sitting on a chair with no chair. Oh, okay. The wall sit. I think I made it a minute. Um, it, it had been years since I did a wall sit. Uh, so I told her two basic goals. Uh, in general, I want to lose weight. Um, l- again, less to do. I, it'd be more fair to say I want to lose body fat and gain muscle because if I have more muscle, that means that I'm mo- probably moving more efficiently and I'm, it's less strain on my joints. So I, I just want to lose some weight so that um, actually a perfect example is at the bar, if I have to quickly chase after somebody who tries to steal a drink from the bar, like mm-hmm. hides it to take with them, uh, sometimes just the quick jog over, I'll land wrong on my knee and I'll, I'll feel it. Like I, I won't like debilitate me, but I'll, I'll walk back and I'll feel the pain in my knee. And I know I could probably mitigate that, A, if I worked out and my joints were a little bit more pliable, but B, if I just had less weight coming down on my knee when I first go after them. Because, I mean, I don't have time to warm up, so I don't. that's not an option for me. Um, <laughs> I'll chase you. I'll get you. You just wait. Just give me a second. Give Let me, me do some stretches. Give me Let 30, me, 30, 30 sure. seconds to stretch. So, so Psych up. Get, a, get, a, you know, get up <clears> to a brisk walk, a little jog. Yeah. So so my first goal I'm is gonna get you. just in general to lose weight. My second goal that I told her is I said to her, so you know when you are driving and you hit a moose and the <laughs> moose is fine but the car is totaled? <laughs> I kind of want to do that in the bar where when I'm wrestling with somebody... You want to wrestle a moose? Yeah. I don't. I want to be solid. Like, I want to be very solid on my feet. I don't... I, I hate fighting. I don't like fighting with people. My Our goal in the bar, and my goal specifically, is to do whatever I can to restrain them. And by restraining them, I just want to have the endurance and the, the strength to be able to hold on to their limbs so that I don't get injured and they don't hurt themselves and mm-hmm. nobody else gets hurt, right? Um, and I find that if, uh, and I talked with some security buddies and they say it's, it's all lower body, uh, for, for that kind of, you'd think it's arms, but they said, no, when you're moving a body, the stronger your legs oh, and the yeah. stronger your, your core yep. is, the, the easier it is. So that's what I told her is I want to be just solid that, you know, I, I, uh, when I plant my feet, I'm not going anywhere. And when I, when I pick up somebody to move, we're going to all move together kind of deal. So those are currently my two goals is to generally lose weight to put less strain on my body and to be able to be hit by a car and the car is totaled. Those both seem like reasonable goals. I have consulted with no trainers. Mm -hmm. I have intermittently talked with people in my life who are more concerned with exercise than me, Mm -hmm. but I have beyond that consulted with no one. Um, And uh, I have uh, read about things on the internet, Mm -hmm. some of which are authoritative, most of which are not. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have generally sort of attempted to do so in a way that involves as little actual going places as possible, mm-hmm. which is why I go down the street or to my basement. Mm-hmm. 
But my goal is 10 pull-ups. Mm. That's a good goal. Like, I, I, I established early in life, at a foolhardy age, a sort of hierarchy of exercise. And there are exercises which I arbitrarily believe are superior to other exercises. Mm -hmm. Whether they are factually or not mm -hmm. is not only something I am unaware of, it is something I am unconcerned about. I mean, it, what, what matters is that I need to have some kind of goal. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you don't really. You, can, you, can, you don't have to have a fitness goal. You can exercise because it's fun. Mm -hmm. Because you like it. Mm -hmm. You can exercise for all kinds of reasons. There's nothing... There's nothing weird about not having a goal for it, but given that it is a thing that challenges me, I felt like I wanted to have a goal, and I felt like I wanted that goal to be a little weird. And pull-ups, to me, are the king of exercise. The sovereign, as it were. Like, I mean, push-ups are okay. You know, bench pressing and squats and things like that. They're pretty cool. Running. Running, to me, is the king of cardio exercise, even though it is it is. I'm pretty sure been demonstrated in studies that it is not. I mean, I have seen articles ranging from running is the greatest thing ever invented by man since we could chase things with spears to running is horrible and will wreck you forever. So I don't know which one of them to believe, but I know that I, I like the idea of running and it is the kind of thing that if I have to do it, I wish to do it well. Um, maybe one day I could catch someone in anger. One day. Like, that's that's when I take them by surprise, right? Yeah. They're like, you know, I, it's okay. I, this guy, he's chased me before. We're fine. You know, I'll just... And then I just, just surge up on him and grab him. And then I don't, I don't actually know what I do with them at that point. But I, we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. But pull-ups are the sovereign of exercise. They are running everything. And um, to me, they are they are... I mean... Because the, of the of the the way that they that they work, they involve me hauling every bit of me off the ground, and the, there are you know they work in tandem with the notion of me being stronger and being able to haul more of me, and there being less of me to haul. Mm -hmm. um, I can I am currently at no pull ups. Uh, and look forward to being there for quite a while. I mean, it is a, it is it is it is pretty hard. Um, I know people who who actually have like very active jobs, like like hydro linesmen and stuff. Who who like ten is a big number. I mean, unless you're in the army and you work out every day, mm -hmm. ten is a pretty big number. Yeah. But uh, I uh, nonetheless look forward to it. I mean, to to possibly never achieving it. But <laughs> no, it's just I needed something, and that and and that was it. And I have no idea how I'm going to get there beyond lifting more and more weight. Yeah. But that'll do it. No. It's one of those things where I think exercise in the whole, I mean, we've talked about body image and, and, and whatnot. But I think, and, and, and I think, it, I, I, I feel like I can say this authoritatively, that exercising because of body image is a bad way to exercise. Mm -hmm. Because ex it, 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 not, not, not just because people who engage in, in 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 that sort of like fat shaming style exercise stuff are doing a bad thing uh they are mm -hmm. but it's also that it's not a thing that you do like exercise isn't like baseball mm -hmm. baseball if you play baseball you know or softball or something you have a team and it's a hobby Mm -hmm. You put like sort of four or five hours a week into it where you go to a practice and you, or you go to a game or sometimes a lot more and you go to a tournament. You know, maybe you have two practices a week because you're, you know, you're super committed, but you're a grown up. Like unless you're unless you're a 15 year old on a baseball team, in which case you're going to have probably a lot more than that because you got mm -hmm. a lot, you got more time. You know, you're going to you're going to do a bit and then you're going to, you know, and then your season's going to end. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna get back into your seat, you know, and then the next next year you start your new season, and then, and then yeah, I mean, baseball as a as a hobby seems pretty fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know that much of about of it about it on account of not playing it, but exercise isn't like that. Exercise is a thing you do all the time. Exercise is like eating food. Like it's a thing you're going to do every day, mm. at least a little. And sometimes you're going to want to eat a 
you do a bunch of it and sometimes you're not. You're going to make plans about eating food, whether you're going to eat food with other people, whether you're going to eat food by yourself, where you're going to make good food and eat good food, things like that. Like you're going to, it is a habit. It is a light, it is, it is, it is a lifestyle. I mean, that's my secret goal is to create that kind of lifestyle because I think it is a lifestyle I would enjoy because I find that when I am done exercising, even though I have punished my body brutally, I am happy. Mm-hmm. I am happy that I have done it. Mm-hmm. And I feel good. And I like feeling good. I mean, my real secret goal of exercise isn't isn't feel thinner or feel stronger, but just feel happy. And that is a way that, that is a thing I do that makes me happy. And so the more I do it, the happier I feel until I can't walk anymore. I think the difference ultimately comes down to intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. Um, it's you're, you're exercising, I would say, I, I'm going to say rightly, or you're, you have good reason to exercise when it's something that internally you want to do. Um, but if it's something like what you're saying, that it's because it's expected, like you're expected to look a certain way by somebody else, it's some, but somebody outside of you. Well, fuck those people. I know, that's what I mean. Like, it's not a good reason to exercise if you're conforming to a body image. Um, I, I guess if you're conforming to a body image that you have of yourself, it's uh, my, maybe I'm breaking down a little bit in that regard. But if you want to, you have to want to exercise. You have to gen- hopefully enjoy it on some level, um, especially if you're doing it right. If you're doing it wrong and hurting yourself... <laughs> I have done that. I've done that before. It's it's the, probably one of the reasons why I fell off the bandwagon. But um, yeah, it's yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's something that you can hash it out in the comments down below in terms of why you exercise and why you think it's important or what do you think are good reasons and bad reasons to exercise? Because I don't know. It, I'm I'm really hard pressed to say there's a bad reason to exercise because you're still exercising. No, there. I think there are lots of bad reasons to exercise. I, I guess. But... There are. I mean. I mean. If 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 someone berates you into exercising, then yeah. you're I mean you're exercising for a bad reason. If you're if you're you know mm-hmm. if you are forced to exercise, mm-hmm. um, if you have a job um, that that hinges there there are there are, there are places um, I, they made the they made a joke about it in in Ocean's Thirteen, but there are real places where where they sort of will rate you on your you know body mass index and stuff like mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. and that. That is that is that is sort of an intolerable thing. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. I, I should I should probably modify my previous um, previous end. Like that does include. Yeah. Okay. You're right about that. Yeah. Like I can think of three reasons. I mean, and the thing is, is that not exercising is a totally permissible thing. Mm-hmm. Like as, as I I have been that person where you don't work out and everyone around you works out and they're like, man, you should just work out. Mm-hmm. Working out will fucking fix your life. Oh my god, it's so great. I just ran like 75 miles and at the end of it I I achieved enlightenment. You, I can uh, I can I can levitate now. Do you even crossfit, bro? Yeah. Oh my god. The cult of crossfit. That 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 is not a topic we're going to talk about partly cuz I don't know anything about crossfit. Yeah. Beyond the fact that the people I know who do crossfit will never shut up about crossfit. Yeah. They're like vegans. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, there, there's there's this notion that, that and, and that's the thing is, if you don't work out, and you are happy, then just be happy. Mm-hmm. Like, like as much as people will talk about health risks and and things like that, if those are not risks that you worry about, feel free to continue not worrying about them. Yeah, like, awesome. I mean that is the, I mean the thing that we both have in common is that we we exercise in some way to be happy. What makes you happy is that feeling of personal excellence that you have <laughs> deep within your virtue ethicist breast. Whenever you exercise and realize that you are slightly more like Charles Atlas, and that when someone at the bar decides to kick sand in your face, you will just hug them yeah. until they are unable to kick sand anymore. Yeah. Charles Atlas and the and the Greek statues from antiquity. Yeah. And I, on the other hand, am happy because I have performed an act of self-abuse that I regard as improvement, and I, re- I, I, I feel that all improvement must be somewhat painful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, this, this podcast has definitely gone on long enough. This, this podcast is long enough that you could listen to it while working out and get a good workout. <laughs> we recommend listening to us <laughs> while working out. We will help you become a better person just by yes. listening and tuning into the Concept Crucible podcast. The Concept Crucible workout tape. 
the worst workout tape ever. I don't know. I don't know. We could write some songs for it. It'd be kind of fun. I guess that's true. Anyway, uh, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. And keep fit and have fun. Oh, boy. And stay awesome. Cool. That would have been easier if I did it with my left hand. Yes. Yeah, that's all right. For, well, to be honest, my first instinct was to shake your hand. Normally when people offered me their it, hand, it's usually in the context of shaking their hand. It's really hard to sync the sound to a handshake. I know. Uh, Unless we, you have a particularly noisome handshake. We could figure it out.